everybody my name is sydney canty just wanted to come on here really quickly and just tell you guys a little bit about my testimony um my father in heaven and jesus christ um i, I was just telling me that i need to come on and just make this video and tell people about my testimony it's definitely not something that i like talking about i guess um because i feel like dang man it was a little bit embarrassing. Like it was embarrassing that I did this and that I had to go through all of this stuff that I went through. Um, so it's not really something that I ever really liked to talk about, but whenever God tells me to talk about it, I'm not ever gonna tell him no. I'm gonna do everything that my father in heaven tells me to do. So um, I really kind of just wanna hurry up and get right into this because I can be a talker. Um, <clears throat> I talk for a living. I'm a, I'm a reporter. <laughs> so, um, but I don't, I'm off work now and I just, I kind of want to rest and have my evening to myself. So I'm going to be really quick here. Um, I do have some notes to just kind of keep me on track and I'm going to just try to be quick with this. So when I was in college, I joined this Black Greek organization called Delta Sigma Theta um, because I was interested in joining, thought they were like really cool and I wanted to be a part of that organization. Um, um, but after I joined, the Lord was really convicting me, you know, like I had done something terrible, like I'd done something really, really bad. Um, and even a little bit before I joined, like while I was online too, online for you, all those of you who are not familiar with Greek life, that means like while you're going through the process of becoming a member of the organization. So <clears throat> I was online with um, a, a couple of other girls, maybe like I think nine other girls, I believe nine other girls. And um there was this like during the process there was this phrase that we had to say now let me just first say there is absolutely nothing wrong with any of the people in these organizations this doesn't have anything to do with the people in the organizations this is 100 percent a spiritual thing it has nothing to do with the people who brought me in with the people i was online with with any of that it's not like oh she had this terrible experience and that's the reason why she left no it has nothing to do with any of that this is a totally spiritual thing it's what it comes down to it has nothing to do with anybody else okay so um while i was online uh we have to say this phrase like the big sisters you know the the profites i, I want to say profites but a lot of people probably won't know who those are so the big sisters gave us these this phrase to say and um we had to say it in our probate the probate is when you come out publicly to the campus um you know that hey i'm a part of this organization now basically um and the phrase was the first part in the process that god like, like it was the first thing in the process that god really convicted me about i don't think i really had convictions up until that point that's when he was like no, don't say this phrase. So there was this phrase that they wanted us to say at the probate. Um, it was just supposed to be a, you know how they, I don't know if you guys know how they are, but sororities, fraternities, stuff like that. And they, you gotta listen to the big sisters, the big brothers, or whatever. So um, the phrase was greetings, most honorable, noble, elegant, intelligent, dignified, devoted, gracious, proud, loving, worthy to be emulated, big sisters of Delta Sigma Theta. Um, for you are our strength when we are weak. For you are our joy when we are unhappy. For you are our guidance when we are lost. For you are our wisdom when we do not know. For you are our light when we cannot see without you where will we be and it goes on a little bit longer but um god was letting me know like when i was writing that phrase down because they wanted us to learn it he was letting me know like i am not okay with this phrase don't say it he actually said to me do not say it like don't say it so i was trying to figure out when i was okay at this point this was like 2018 okay it was a couple years ago and i was younger and not as strong i've always known god I, my entire life i can't remember a time where i was not going to church didn't know jesus but i was not into him then like as much as I am now, like, you know what I mean? I've grown, I've matured and my relationship with him has grown and matured as it should, you know, with age and with seeking him. And, um, he was just telling me like, this is no, not something that you should be saying. So I remember bringing it up to my former line sisters and to our, the big sisters. And I was telling them like, Hey, like, I don't, Hey, we, I actually called them on the phone. Like, I, this is not a phrase that I think I can say. And they were saying, what's wrong with it? What's wrong? I kept saying, I, li I don't know, but it, it's just my spirit is telling me, do not say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Um, and I, I, I later came to realize I said it anyway, y'all. Let's just, you know, didn't listen, went to the probate, said it anyway. But, um, I, I thought that I was slick though. I thought I could just replace it. I said, well, maybe if God won't mind me saying for he is our strength when we are weak, for he is our guidance when we cannot, you know what I mean? Like I was putting he in there when I was just saying it on stage, but it was, you know, he still didn't want me to say it at all. So I was still disobedient there, but, um, yeah, he was, this is a phrase where like, in this phrase, we were saying things to them that you should be saying to God. You know what I mean? God is my wisdom when I don't know, 
or when I'm lost. He is my joy when I'm happy because the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. You know what I mean? Like he is my strength when I am weak because the Bible says that um, his strength is made um, powerful in our weakness, something like that. I can't remember exactly where for what that phrase says, but his strength is made something in our weakness. And I, I, I will go and find that and I'll drop that down in the um, under the description. Um, but, and you know, it says for you are our guidance and we're lost, our strength when we're weak and we're unhappy. And that's just not true. All of that in the Bible, there are things in the Bible that completely and totally combat that, you know, that says God is our strength. It says God is our joy. It says God is our guidance and our wisdom. Uh, wisdom comes from him. You know what I mean? And so he was not okay with me saying that phrase and rightfully so, you know, he was jealous and he should have been because those are things that I should be saying that I should have been uttering to him and not to anyone else. And I'm not, not they're not, I, I don't believe they were trying to make us praise them or anything like that. I, I believe it was actually passed down to them from some higher ups. Um, but I, it was just not a phrase that I should have said. So that was the first thing that had me like, okay, something might be off here. But I thought like, well, maybe it was just that one thing, you know, maybe I don't think every single chapter of Delta all around the world had to say that maybe it was just that one thing, you know, no, later on down the line, um, when we actually got through being online and we were getting ready to be inducted into the organization, um, we were in, like in this little room and we had to like, we're white and it was like ceremonial and there was like this table, um, they had like this Delta book on it and some candles and like a, I want to say maybe like a little contract because we signed it. Um, that's the best way I can describe it. But that table, even they might not have even realized it, but that is an altar. That was an altar, an actual altar. So they stood before the altar, the actual Delta altar. It had like a Delta blanket on it too. I remember that part. Yeah, God, thanks for bringing that back to me. Yeah, it had, you know, some stuff on it, candles, a Delta book, like a whole blanket thing, like a, a contract where you sign something. And um, yeah, it was just, it was, it was an altar. It was an altar is what it was. And that's not a good thing. So basically one of the girls, they would get up there and they'd say, you are about to take upon yourself vows and obligations from which you can never be free. And they will follow you to the final judgment. That has been stuck in my mind since the day they said, it. and I thought that was a little bit weird. I was like, maybe they're just saying that what we're about to agree to is that serious. And we just need to take it with us forever. You know, that's how I'm thinking. No, when you take upon yourself vows, it's almost like you're getting married. You know what I mean? Like how, like in a marriage, you know, like when you take your vows and you say your I do's and that's actually something that we had to say. They had to say, hey, we're going to ask each candidate now who, um, are you, that you are of your own free will seeking admission into, um, this organization. And, um, yeah. And, and they, they say, you have to answer with I do. So, okay. When they called my name, I said, I do, you know, I am of my own free will seeking admission into this organization. And when I got up there, they said, we're going to take you by your hand and we're going to just have you kneel on this pillow. I didn't think that was a big deal. I'm like, all right, cool. No biggie. Awesome. I'm about to be a Delta. You know, they're like, just, we're going to take you by your hand and have you kneel on this pillow in front of the table, which was actually, I'm just thinking that it's a table decorated with Delta. No, it is an altar. So stay with me. I am now kneeling. I'm getting on my knees at an altar and I am signing over my allegiance to this organization. That is not okay. Okay. Let me tell you why. When you sign over your allegiance, you are giving legal right in the spirit to, I mean, complete and total access to whatever entity that you're signing that legal, you know, your legal rights over to. So God was telling me that he was not rooted in this organization. He told me, daughter, I'm not rooted in this. He said, I'm not rooted in this. He's not in it. We were, and they said that it was based on Christian principles. So I'm thinking that he's in it and he's not in it. He told me that he wasn't in it, but he didn't tell me that before I knew, you know, this was after I knew, but I'm gonna get to that. Anyway, I knew at the altar and when they called out my name, I said something in front of these, I, Sydney Canty, in front of these finite witnesses here by pledge my allegiance to, I don't even want to say, say the full sentence again, you know, but, and then I signed my name. And after I got up off my knees from the altar and signed over my allegiance to this organization, I had done, some, done something wrong, something that God was not okay with, that he did not approve of. And so these vows and obligations, like when you're standing at the altar and when you're getting ready to get married, you know what I mean? You stand at, stand at an altar because you're getting ready to get married. And they say, 
your vows or whatever, and you say your I do's, and then you guys seal that with the kiss. Well, we, you know, I ain't seal it with a kiss or nothing, but we sealed it with that signature. You know what I mean? And from the time when you get married, you are in covenant with yourself, that other person, and God. You are making a covenant between yourself, that other person, and God. So if I was in covenant with an organization that God very clearly told me later on that he was not a part of, then that means I am in covenant with myself, this organization, and what other entity? By default, even by default, if it is not God, it is the enemy himself. So I was in covenant with the devil and didn't know it. And I know that you guys are sounding like, oh, this is like conspiracy. I promise you, y'all, it's not. I can't even. It is, it was just not okay. It was not okay what I did. Okay, it was not okay what I did. And I know a lot of y'all are like, she crazy. She don't know what she's talking about. I'm in this organization and I love God. Okay, I was in the organization and I loved God too. Okay, and then God came to me and told me these things. I didn't figure these things out on my own because if I had, I had never, I would have never joined. I did not figure these things out on my own. Okay, I would not have ever joined. God told me these things. And he told, he told me to make a choice and he told me to leave. Okay, um, so after I had joined... I started to feel like guilt, a whole lot of guilt, a whole lot of conviction. And I couldn't figure out why, because even then I didn't know that I was doing something wrong. So I'm telling you now, like, yeah, I got on my knees and I did this, all this, whatever. But I didn't know that I was doing something wrong. So my spirit was feeling conviction from the spirit of the living God because he knew that I had done something wrong, but I didn't know. And the Bible says that my people perish from lack of knowledge. I did not know that I was doing something wrong. So... Um, I started to read the little Delta after you cross after you cross they give you the book with all the Delta stuff in it and all this other stuff so you can't even read it beforehand you know you get it after you cross so after I was in the inducted into the organization I was reading the book and I was reading some of the songs there were songs there was like a national hymn and I, I one of the songs says Delta we sing praises to thee that never never sat right with me that never sat right with me because the only person in my entire life I have ever sang praises to was Jesus Christ period so that ding, 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 was immediately like okay red light red light red light what does this mean what does this mean and then i just tried to think like well i mean you praise your husband when he's doing something right you praise your children when they do the right thing when they bring home good grace so that's not a you know it's not a big deal and then i have to think like no you tell them you know good job we're so proud of you we love you you don't sing praises to them oh daughter we praise you for this a and you know you don't sing praises to them you know what i mean so it was different it was a little bit it was actually like like a song of worship that was not okay all right there was also another thing that like kind of went off in my head this minerva okay she is the i guess mascot that's what you would is how i could explain it for people who are not in greek life so that they can understand minerva was they call her the goddess of wisdom that never said right with me. They called her the goddess of wisdom, okay? And she is like the mascot, like the face for Delta. Um, we don't have to look to Minerva for wisdom. You know what I mean? Like can't, there is no Greek God, no little fake Greek God that can give me any kind of wisdom that my father in heaven cannot give me. You know what I mean? And so also the first commandment is thou shalt not have any gods before me. You know what I mean? So. That does not literally mean you can have all these other gods that you worship and that you have in your presence, but just don't have none of them before me. That literally means don't have them in his presence, period. Period. None. He is the only God that you are to be worshiping. If you actually consider yourself a Christian, he is the only God that you are to be worshiping, that you are to be in relationship and in covenant with. You cannot, you know, you, you can't. There can only be one. There can only be one. And so this goddess of wisdom that I had just joined this organization that looks to this goddess of wisdom, you know what I mean? And I'm in covenant now with this organization and this goddess of wisdom. Well, I, I, it's a false God. She's not a real, you know what I mean? So it's not, it was just bad. It was just, it was so bad. It was so bad. And I was like, Jesus, Lord have mercy. Like, okay, like help me, Jesus, help me to understand. I, I, that's, this is, I was kind of coming into the realization like, okay, maybe something really is 
wrong here, but God, I, I could just be tripping. You know, you, you always go back and forth because you really want something. I feel like I worked so hard to get here and I finally got here, you know, getting into an organization for most people was not easy. And I was trying to get into it and I finally did and I didn't want to give it up. So I kept, every time God was showing me a sign, I was like, well, maybe it's not this, or maybe it's not that. Yeah, it don't sit right with me, but that doesn't mean that it's wrong. I, maybe I just don't understand. You know, all these excuses that I was coming up with so that I could stay in the organization. It was another thing that hit me when I was reading this book. Again, this book that they do not even allow you to see until after you've joined. If I could have read through this book, I probably would not have joined, okay? But um, there, there is there are some uh, a verse, like a page snippet thing in, in the little Delta book and the doctrine that kind of mix and mingles with the Bible to fit Delta. And Deuteronomy 4 and 2 in the Bible very clearly says... Um, it says, you should not add unto the word which I command you. I have it right here. You should not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish from it that you may keep the commandments of Jehovah your God, which I command you. So it's basically saying, do not take from and do not add to the word of God, period. Do not take from and do not add to the word of God, period. There are no if, ands, and buts. There is no fine print. There are no stipulations, no anything. Do not take from the word that the Lord your God has given you and do not add to it at all. In the Delta book, there was a verse that is taken from 1 Corinthians 13 that says, you know, 1 Corinthians in the Bible 13 says, um, it, it, it's, it's a scripture about love. You know what I mean? And, and it's a scripture um about like it says like when i was a i remember at first corinthians 13 and 11 i think it says like when i was a child i thought as a child i spake as a child uh, but when i became a man i put away childish things and you know but in the beginning the verse talks about love so in the delta little book in the doctrine it was talking about love and stuff and uh sisterhood i believe and then it goes to this excerpt that says when i was a pyramid you're called a pyramid when you are online to become a delta so when you're Still going to the process to become a Delta, like I talked about earlier, you're called a pyramid during that time frame. However long that time frame is for you. The verse said, when I was a pyramid, I thought it's a pyramid, spake as a pyramid, but when I became a Delta, I dot, 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 dot. Immediately, I remember saying to some of my former line sisters, like, does this look familiar to y'all? Does this look for, this is from the Bible. I remember saying that, like, this is from the Bible. You guys took an excerpt from the Bible and you mixed and mingled with it to fit Delta. And the Bible very clearly says not to do that. It does not say under this circumstance and under that circumstance, or well, for this organization, if you're a Christian-based organization, it's fine. No, it says don't do it, period. There's no if, ands, or buts. There's no read between the lines. It says not to do it and you did it. So that's wrong, that's wrong. So I was like, okay, God, that's another one. That is another one. And I was kind of really at this point freaking out because I was really, really like, there's no, like you keep trying to go back and forth, Sydney, about why this organization is okay. And God keeps showing you that it's not for many reasons, that it's just not something that you should be a part of. So after realizing a lot of these things, I was in torment at this point because my flesh wanted to stay and the organization but my spirit knew that i could not so i was going i was in a fight between my flesh and my spirit internally and i am usually a very joyful happy person i was not happy i was tormented on the inside i was going through term oil i mean there was just a whole lot going on internally because i was in a literal battle between my flesh and my spirit between what i knew was right but what i what my my wicked heart desired okay and wow i'm shaking y'all because i remember that feeling and it's just not a good one it was not a good one and it it was a it was a battle it was awful it was terrible and then i had to remember you know what i mean you got this and you thought i remember i was thanking god when i when i played when i crossed i was like thank you so much jesus i wanted this so bad it's all thanks to god like thank you i prayed and you helped me you got me through it the bible says the blessings of the lord maketh you rich and addeth no sorrow I was filled with so much sorrow after getting, and it wasn't, again, it has nothing to do with the people in the organization. They were great, all of them. They were awesome. I have nothing bad to say about any of them. They were awesome. So it had nothing to do with my experience. It was the fact that I had 
joined myself, my spirit, because everything, I promise you guys, everything is spiritual, whether you believe it or not. Everything is spiritual. So I had tied my spirit, myself to this thing and it was fighting it because it knew that it was wrong. And I didn't know until I, until I knew. And then I was fighting with myself and it was awful. It was, there was so much torment and the blessings of the Lord maketh you rich and they addeth no sorrow. So I was like, oh my goodness, this was not a blessing from the Lord. Because if it was, I would not be in sorrow. I would not be in torment. I would not be in turmoil. I would not be going back and forth. I would not be a double-minded man because the Bible says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. I had to come to the realization that Sydney, you have to leave this organization. And the Lord had been telling me that too. He had been telling, he told me through. So you guys, he pursued me. My father in heaven pursued me. He came after me. He came after me. He came after me. There was not a day after I knew, after I was, I found out the truth. And after he knew like, okay, now she knows the truth. He pursued me every single day after that. I mean, I would see signs on billboards. I would see signs. I would hear signs over the radio. There were people that I never talked to that God was speaking through them. It would say, hey, I know we haven't talked, but God told me to tell you this. And I would be like, I didn't tell anybody that. That was something that I was thinking in my own mind. I didn't tell anybody that. And she, obviously that was God speaking through them because he knows everything that I'm thinking. in my. It was just so much confirmation. So many things where I was just like, Lord, have mercy. Like I actually have to leave and I don't want to because number one, it's going to be embarrassing because I came out to the entire campus and to all of social media and joining this wonderful organization, you know, black Greek organization that I wanted to join for so long. And I finally did. And now I have to leave so soon too. So y'all, all this was in a matter of a couple of weeks. Okay. So, so soon it was just, it was a mess but it was my mess. It was my mess that my father in heaven came and that he cleaned up for me. So y'all, he was even sending me messages on Twitter. Okay. I remember, I'm just going to give you an, a quick example. I remember we had this Delta ceremony dinner or something thing. I can't even remember what it was. Okay. It was back in 2018. So I don't, I don't know what, and 2018 was not that long ago, but I have done so much since then. So I can't remember. There was something that we were doing and I was supposed to say the, the prayer. I was on program to say the prayer because they knew even then that, you know, I was real spiritual love Jesus and all that. So they had me on there to say the prayer and I was writing out the prayer. Before. I don't know why, but they wanted me to write out the prayer. Okay. Maybe that was just how they do their things. I said, okay, usually I don't write out a prayer before I say it, but I'm like, okay, y'all want me to write it out. I'll write it out. Whatever. Writing out the prayer. And as I'm writing it, I start writing. And I just get on Twitter for a second. And I literally see something that said, God is not going to bless what his word forbids. And I was like, ouch. I knew 100. You know how when something, when you hear a preacher say something, or not even a preacher, when you hear anybody, somebody says something and it like sticks with your spirit and you like, oh, that was for me. That was, I knew, I knew it in my bones. It was for me. I was like, yep, I know. Cause I was praying that my prayer was that he would bless the sorority. I remember that. They said, oh man, you know, pray that he'll bless the sorority and pray for the older sisters and for the blah, 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 blah. And I was like, okay. So my prayer was for him to bless the sorority. And literally, literally specific to my prayer, it said, God is not going to bless what his word forbids. So I said, my, 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 my. Okay, Jesus. You know, like he was sending me so many signs. I got so sick. I got so, he was sending me so many signs. I got so sick of seeing them. I even threw my phone across the room one day. I got sick of seeing them because I didn't want to leave the organization because I wanted to be in it so badly. And my sister, her gifts and God were starting to grow so, 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 so much. And she came into my room one day. I, I didn't tell her this. I was sitting in my room because I was miserable because I was in turmoil on the inside. So I was secluding myself from people. I was isolating myself. I was not myself. I was sad all the time instead of joyful and happy like I usually am. I was not talking to my people or my best friends or my family members. I was secluded because I was going through something. And my sister bust into my room one day and she goes, hey, um, God told me that you're starting to resent the word. And I said, wow, that I literally, that literally just happened like two hours ago. Yeah. I threw my phone across the room because I got sick of, sick of him sending me messages through the word, through his Bible. I got tired of it and I threw my phone across the room and she came in there like two hours later and told me that. And I was like, yep. You're right. I, I couldn't even lie. I was like, yep, I sure am. Because I was just, I didn't want to leave the organization. I was being rebellious at this point. And it's it's amazing how, how amazing and powerful God is. Because even after I came into knowledge of the truth, he still pursued me. Instead of saying, well, she knows and she's just going to disobey me and do whatever she wants to. Fine, I'm going to let her go out there and do whatever she wants. No, not my father in heaven. He still pursued me. He still pursued me. He came after me, y'all. I'm not lying. He came after me every single day every single day 
through some kind of way. He reached me in some kind of way, Either, whether he was speaking to me directly, he was speaking to me through somebody else, through a billboard, through Twitter, through the radio. He pursued me every single day. He got into everything that I was doing. So if I was listening to the radio, he got into it. If I was scrolling on Twitter, he got into it. If I was talking to somebody, he got into the conversation. I mean, he pursued me every day. If I just wanted to flush everybody out and just be by myself. So I don't want to hear nothing. I don't want to see nothing because I'm tired of seeing stuff. He was just, Then he would just start talking to me. I mean, I couldn't get away from him. He wouldn't allow me to. And I, I love him. I love him for that. I love him for not abandoning me when he should have. And I'm so grateful that he did it. So, um, yeah, I, I just I, I just want you guys to know um, the story is it's longer than that, but I'm not going to go into the entire thing. I told you all the meat and I told you what was important, what was most important, what you needed to hear. Um, Greek organizations, they are just not of God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's something that's going to upset somebody. I don't want to say that I don't care. Um, but I, I care more about what my, what my father in heaven wants me to do. And it's to, to, to relay this message, any organization that has false gods attached to it, that has light of the world and, you know, stuff, little stuff like that. God is of wisdom. And there was even a passage in the Delta book that said our souls will rapture raised with Delta. That is in the doctrine. It's actually in the Delta doctrine. Our souls will rapture ways with Delta. I don't want my soul to rapture raise with the, I want my soul to rapture raise with Jesus. Hello. I keep, I can keep going. Okay. But I, I told you I didn't want it to be long and I feel like I'm already really long because I am a talker. Um, but yes, I left that organization. It took me two months. Wasn't in it very long, but I didn't need to be to see everything God wanted me to see. And I'm grateful that he chased after me. I'm grateful that he didn't give up on me. And I'm grateful that I have given myself back to him after coming out. And when I came out of that, I had to renounce it. I had to denounce it. And then I had to do it publicly. He convicted me even. I left and I left quietly when I first left because I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed of the fact that I went through everything to join that organization, came out publicly on social media that I had joined this organization and publicly on our campus after the probate. And I was proud and rocking the jackets and strolling and all this stuff. And then I had to leave because my father in heaven is not a part of this organization. I was embarrassed. So I left quietly. And even then he was patient with me. He knew that I was not ready to reveal all that had been going on. And then at a, a couple months after that, maybe like six, seven, eight months after that, he said, you know, like, he let me know in my spirit, daughter, it's time to tell the people. It's time to tell them. I was convicted with a sentence that said, how can you live publicly for Delta and privately for me? That still gets me today. In all seriousness, <laughs> that still gets me today. I won't do it. I will, I'm going to do everything God wants me to do. I'm, I'm going to say everything that he wants me to say. No matter who it upsets, if it does upset you, I am sorry, but it is what it is. I am not speaking my opinion here. There is scripture attached to this. I wanted to be in the organization. For those of you who are in organizations, I wanted to be in it as bad as you did, and I did it, and I got in it. And then when I had to leave, I didn't want to. I didn't want to. I rebelled. Even when I came into knowledge of the truth, I still rebelled against my father in heaven. And he pursued me every single day until I left. Until I finally made the right decision. And I thank him for that every single day. Those of you may be considering joining. Get in the face of God. Get in the face of God. Get in your word. What are your convictions telling you? Listen to the word of God. I don't care what anybody says. You all, you can all hear God. All of you can hear God. What's he saying to you? Be honest with yourself. Because at the end of the day, it's your soul that's at stake. Yours. From the choices that you make. He's not going to force you into anything. He might badger you like he did me every single day. But he's not going to force you into anything. So, um, I pray that you all receive my message well. For those of you who are offended upset again i'm sorry but it is what it is this is the truth this is what i went through this is my experience and i'm so grateful i'm so grateful for god i'm so grateful that i have a testimony and that i wasn't defeated in this god is good i love every single one of you every single one of you and there is nothing that you can do about it god bless you i love you
Y'all have a good night.